Dear learners, welcome you all to e-learning platform. This is week 11. In this week, you are going to learn the major themes and critical appreciation of King Arthur, written by Sir Thomas Mallory. Me, Faisal Ahmed, with you throughout this lecture as usual. Let's begin. Major teams, courtly love. There are many examples of courtly love in Le Monte de Arthur, including the story of Sir Garrett. <clears throat> his defeat of Red Knight and his winning of the Lady Leonessi as his wife. <clears throat> Gareth represents the ideal love, one that ends in marriage and is above all else honorable. But the story of romantic love and chivalry that most often comes to mind the story comes to mind the story of Sir Lancelot and Queen Guinevere, a love that is clearly adulterous. After this, after his introduction into the text, it is clear that many of Lancelot's heroic actions are designed to please the queen. He is clearly her favorite and justifiably so, since in all of his adventures, Lancelot is brave, honorable, and strong. <coughs> Because Lancelot fights to please and honor Guinevere and not God, he is excluded from the quest for the Holy Grail. This image of courtly love changes when Lancelot is called upon to fight to save Guinevere's life. In the first instance, Guinevere is unjustly accused of murder. And a disguised Lancelot becomes her champion, overcoming Sir Mather and freeing the Queen. <clears throat> According to romantic tradition, a knight entering a tournament might also wear a lady's token to express his love. Sir Lancelot wears the token of Elaine of Astolot, but does so only to enhance his disguise. Later he wears the queen's token, thus making public his love for her. Another aspect of courtly love is the knightly is the, is the knight's rescue of his lady. Lancelot has already rescued Guinevere once, but when she is kidnapped, he rescues her again from. Melia Gowns, her kidnapper. Lancelot then fights and kills Guinevere's oppressor. But because of these events, Guinevere is just guilty of adultery and treason and is sentenced to be born alive. Again, Sir Lancelot rescues his lady, but as a result, sets into motion events that will lead to the destruction of Arthur and of the round table. Sir Lancelot and Queen Guinevere's courtly love was far more than a harmless romantic interlude. <clears throat> Honor, the next theme. When Arthur establishes the code for the knights of, of his round table, one important element is honor. Arthur, Arthur's knights owe him honor, but more importantly, they owe honor to God. Most of the knights waver on this last requirement for nearly all of the knights, their adventures, battles, and tournaments are fought to honor their king or more immediately themselves. 
Gawain fights for personal and family honor, and Lancelot fights for the queen's honor. Because of this, almost all of the knights fail in their quest for the Holy Grail. Only Galahad, Bors, and Percival place honor of God ahead of personal honor, vanity, and pride. Therefore, only these three knights, Galahad, Bors, and Percival, this, only these three knights are permitted to complete the quest for the Holy Grail. Mallory makes individual character an important element of his story and how each character conducts himself in an honorable fashion is a key point in the text. Next theme, Fate and Destiny. Thanks to Marlin's prophecies and his magic, many times the readers are told of a prophecy that includes death and destruction. Characters are fated to meet one another on the battlefield or in tournaments, and fated to win or die based on an action that occurred much earlier, and for which they may hold no responsibility. For example, Balin easily draws out the sword aff affixed to his scabbard worn by the damsel. By doing so, he is fated to kill his dearest friend, his brother. In another example, the burial spot of Lancelot is fated to be the site of the battle between Lancelot and Tristra Tristram, two knights who love one another and who would not willing fight one another, but who were destined to do so. This fate or destiny is not attributed to God or other spiritual matters, but instead to characters present in the text. Both Marlene and the Lady of the Lake act as representatives of, of fate, manipulating the characters and their actions to create a fate they predict. Next theme, obedience. Obedience is an element of the duty and responsibility that all knights owe to their king and god. Obedience to Arthur is a part of every knight's code. Even when obedience results in certain death, there are several examples of obedience to Arthur's commands. Why to do so will bring harm to the knight. One such example occurs at the beginning of the quest for the Holy Grail, when Arthur learns of the sword in the floating stone. Arthur learns that the legend promises that only the best knight in the world can claim the sword, and if any others try to pull out the sword, they will be cursed. Lancelot refuses Arthur's order to try. Section Arthur orders Guinevere to be put to death. In this instance, try, but Gawain willing, willingly obeys Arthur's order because Arthur is his king and he has commanded it. In another section, Arthur orders Guinevere to be put to death. In this instance, Gawain refuses to obey his king's command, but his brothers who also object <coughs> are present. As a result, Gareth and Gaheris are murdered by Lancelot during his rescue of the Queen. Revenge, another major theme in the epic. Much of the action in this epic revolves around revenge. The eye for an eye motif runs through the individual character stories. For instance, are Palanor kills King Lot and Lord's son Gawain to avenge his father's death, will later kill Palanor. In another example of revenge, Gawain and his brother Gaheris murder Lamarok, whom they accused of an adulterous relationship with their mother. This feud between 
Lamarock and the sons of King Lot has motivated many of the sons' actions before culminating in death. Finally, it is Gawain's insistence that his brothers be avenged that leads to the destruction of the round table. <coughs> Because Arthur and Gawain are pursuing Lancelot, they leave Britain and the Queen, unattended and Mordred, says his boat. Had Gawain been able to pass on the need for blood revenge, the battle in which he and Arthur were destroyed would not have happened. Ultimately, the theme of revenge, most particularly the familial blood revenge, runs throughout the epic and leads to the destruction of all that Arthur had created, especially the round table or the parliament or the first parliament of England. Characters discussion. Arthur, Arthur king of Britain and head of the round table, a brave, just and temperate ruler. He values the fellowship of his man above revenge for his queen's infidelity. And he closes his eyes to her love for Lancelot until Mordred and Agravain force him to act. Queen Guinevere. Queen Guinevere, a jealous, passionate woman whose fiery drives her lover Lancelot mad. She repents after the king is betrayed by Mordred and she dies in a convent. Lancelot du Lake. Lancelot du Lake. The greatest of all the knights except those who achieved the Grail quest, he is himself granted a vision of the Grail, but his love for the Queen bars him from success in, in spite of his deep and sincere penitence. Now we'll go to the critical analysis of the epic. Critical evaluation. So Thomas Mallory's prose achieves the impression of simplicity while comprising words beautifully arranged. His narrative has the quality of realism even in his most fanciful scenes. He is also a master of naturalistic dialogue. For these reasons, he serves as the model for later writers of English prose. His work behind only perhaps the King James Version of the Bible. Mallory presents himself as a translator of the French Arthurian romances. A chief source for his own writing might have been the 12th century romances of Tretien de Troyes, who introduced the separate legend of the Holy Grail into the Arthurian tales. The French romances also contributed the concept of courtly love. In short, the Arthurian legend had been growing and evolving for centuries before Mallory sat down to write Le Morte de Arthur. <coughs> the historical Arthur, if he had existed, is late to have been a Celtic chieftain named Arturius, who resisted the Anglo-Saxon invasion in the early 6th century. One contemporary historian describes a great British victory at the Battle of Mons Badonicus, Mount Badon, around 500. But he, 500, but he makes no mention of Arturius. In the 9th century, Nennius places the battle some, somewhat later, 516 AD, and it states that a person named Arthur had commanded against the invaders. By the next century, Arthur's legend had grown consist considerably. <coughs> In the 12th century, Welshman Geoffrey of Monmouth wrote Historia Regum Britannia. Circa 1136, the history of the kings of Britain, 1718, a work that makes Arthur into a great romantic figure. Geoffrey's anglo france translator first mentions the round table and soon Arthurian tales were 
appearing in all friends. Le Mortier actor, Sir Thomas, Sir Thomas Mallory, knight, adventurer, and soldier, <coughs> composed this series of tales during nearly 20 years of imprisonment while he was in prison between 1450 to 1471 AD and rendered into English the very 13th century French stories of Marlin, Arthur, Chandler, the Knights of the Round Table, and Holy Grail. In so doing, he created a national treasure and a narrative central to English literature. The work is filled with action in battle, passion in love, and wisdom in governing at its center is an event that marks the significance uh, the beginning of the round table's breakup. The quest for the Holy Grail. Galahad and Percival achieve the Grail quest. Lancelot, because of his unworthiness, does not. Boss returns with Lancelot to tell the tale. And the fellowship loses two of his best knights, Galahad and Percival. Then follows Gawain's accusation against Queen Guinevere in Poison Apple in the poison apple and the dissolution of the fellowship accelerates until the final battle in which Arthur is mortally wounded and later died. Magic and the supernatural pervade the work from its outset. When Arthur pulls the sword from the stone through the mystic adventures of the grail to the mysterious passing of Arthur who some say shall yet come again or a resurrection will take place. Mallory combines heroic and epic elements to celebrate England's golden age of chivalry, national ideals of unity, power and civil, uh, civility, and the high code of knightly conduct. Physical overview. Mallory's epic Lemotor de Arthur deviates from traditional romantic epics in that it is a prose work rather than a poem. These choices may reflect Mallory's own talents and preference for the prose format. There is little knowledge of Mallory's education, but it is doubtful that he had any serious education. Prior to Gutenberg's success in 1454, there were a few books, and so there is no reason to think that Mallory had any practical success to the epic tradition as it evolved from the works such as the Odyssey or an age. These Greek and Roman epics had virtually disappeared from public view until the Renaissance made them more widely accessible. There is no evidence that Mallory wrote any other works, but that does not diminish his accomplishment in writing Le Mort de Arthur with this work Mallory functions as a compiler, compiling all the stories associated with the Arthurian legends and assembling them in one book. As a compiler, Mallory also places the stories in a more straightforward chronological format which makes the work more accessible to the readers. Thank you very much for being with me. That's all for this week. More will be next week. Bye-bye.